All right, how's it going, y'all? So I'm here with another little talking video. No coding, just talking. I wanted to talk about the KISS principle, the KISS principle. Um, honestly, this is probably one of the most important things to embrace as a software engineer. And the main reason is because as your projects that you're working on get large, stuff can get really complex, right? So the principle stands for keep it stupid simple or keep it simple stupid, right? Um, I don't know if he's calling me stupid or if it's like make it simple stupid. Um, but that's the idea is that everything you write should be so simply stupid that anyone can read it, anyone can understand it, including yourself in the future. If you find that you're writing code that is like kind of, uh, you know, convoluted, then you maybe need to kind of apply this principle to make sure that everything is super simple, right? You should be able to kind of read through the code and not be confused or have to leave comments to understand like what stuff is doing. I didn't read through this article. I just Googled keep it stupid simple. And this is the first link that came up. So I just wanted to kind of have some context of what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think some, some past experiences is like sometimes when you're coding, like you'll start doing stuff and then you'll start like adding interfaces if you're doing java or typescript and then you'll start adding all this extra complexity to your application and you need to stop and think about what you're doing and what you're adding to really understand like is what you're doing actually beneficial or are you just following some type of like clean architecture design or some type of design pattern that was kind of uh spoon fed to you through like you know the gang of four algorithms book or something is what you're doing actually making your code simple to understand, simple to execute, simple to read? If it's not, then you probably want to take a step back and reevaluate what you're doing. Um, and one way to really achieve this is to do test-driven development. If you don't know what test-driven development is, it's basically you write a test to satisfy your requirements before you actually implement the code and make sure that that test fails when you first write it. Then you come back, you implement your code, the test should pass, and then you move on to another test or another task, right? Now, the idea behind that approach is because, or the idea of why that helps keep stuff simple, stupid, or stupid, simple, I don't, whatever, is because the moment your test passes, like you're done. Technically, you're done. You've done the simplest thing. Um, but you can also just refactor your code because now that you have a test that verifies the inputs and outputs of a function, if you're doing like a unit test, now you can come back and you can kind of refactor it as much as you want to just reduce the complexity and make sure it's simple. All right, I think complexity is the one thing that we fight all the time as software engineers. Like as systems grow and you have multiple people working on a piece of software, the stuff just gets out of hand. It becomes like a giant ball of yarn, kind of like this picture is showing. And if you don't slow down and take a step back and like make sure what you're doing actually works, like stuff just gets out of hand quick, especially as you have a bunch of different developers all working on the same project, all trying to do stuff their own way and implement solutions their own way, the way they can think of stuff. It just becomes really, really hard to manage large scale applications. And then you start like integrating with third party services and you have to like do all this error catching and logic there and make sure everything works like flawlessly. And then if you add on type, some type of like clean architecture design on top of your code base, stuff can get even more confusing because now you can't just command click and go to the definition in your IDE. You have to like wrap your files and try to find the files that you're looking for. Um, so if I could give like one piece of advice to someone who's trying to get in the industry and learn how to code, it's definitely follow this principle, like keep everything super simple. Um, and I, I use this to kind of judge like when a library or a framework should be used. Like I think I made a video recently about Sustan, but if you look at this library and you compare it to um, another state management library, so Sustan is a React state management library, right? So you can create some like a store, you can increment state, um, change state, do whatever you want with state. And it's really, really simple, right? It's super simple. If you compare that to like Redux or MobX or something else, those, like the older version of Redux, I think the older version of Redux, um, not the Redux toolkit, but the older version of Redux, that is a prime example of when stuff was not simple. Um, you know, there were certain design decisions made to keep stuff decoupled and adding like events and strings and trying to make it so your whole system is decoupled like with actions and reducers and stuff. 
That is not simple. In my opinion, that is not simple. That is just complex, right? So if you look at a, a, a library like Redux, even the idea of a reducer, um, <clears throat> let me throw some shade at, at React real quick, right? So in React, there's like reducers where all you really wanted to do was just change a property on the state. But to achieve that, you have to like freaking return the state dot whatever added to something like you have to do like i don't know if i'm giving you a good example here but you know how in react if you want to change state you basically do like you do dot 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 state and then like a new value because react is immutable and you like you have to like change values like this this is another example where i think stuff maybe got out of hand like we went from keep it simple to let's over engineer and let's make this overly complicated and there's good reasons for having code be immutable and there's reasons why React went down that path. But at the end of the day, if you compare React state to something like Vue or Svelte, let's look at Svelte real quick. If you look at the Svelte library, I, I guess I need to be looking at the reactivity. So to declare state, you just declare a variable, right? So if you're going back to this paradigm of keep it simple, stupid, uh, like this makes sense because in order to increment that, guess what you have to do? You have to do count plus plus right i don't even know if this would even work let me let me make sure this works you might have to do uh count equals count plus one because of the way svelte works wait i'm a dumbo let me go ahead and like do this change the button like this so in order to click on this function or execute this function like let me see if plus plus works i, I might just be yeah so this this kind of works as well so again like this is just javascript Count plus plus. This is how you increment a variable in Svelte. It's simple. It makes sense because we're doing the same pattern that JavaScript provides us out of the box. Now with React, you want to increment some counter? Well, you have to pull in a state, or I'm going to say counter. I'm going to say set count is state. And then to increment this thing, you have to basically add like an on click listener. And then you have to basically call a uh, pass an anonymous function. You have to do uh, count plus one, something like this. And in some instances, you actually need to pass this like an anonymous function and do that. Is this simple? Do we keep it simple, stupid? I don't think so. I think we've dropped the ball on keeping it simple compared to some other approaches. And I know it's not fair to compare Svelte to React because Svelte came later. We learned from our mistakes from other libraries and frameworks, but this is the approach. This is what I'm kind of talking about. Increment a counter. You write some JavaScript. You do a plus plus. Done. Okay. So anytime that you're using a library or a framework or you're building something, the idea is like, is this something would be, is, is what I'm building, what I'm adding, the function I'm creating, the component I'm creating, is this something someone's going to be able to easily read? and use for themselves without having to like dive into the code base and really understand these like uh, really complex things that are happening. If you follow this paradigm, then you should basically be pretty good. I mean, your application should be pretty easy to manage and you should be, it should be pretty easy to keep on adding features every day to your application as long as you didn't kind of strive from this principle. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of point that out for anyone who hasn't really heard this. I'm sure you've all heard this before, but this is important. This is super important. This is something that we fight all the time as software engineers when systems grow in complexity and we have to keep them easy to understand or else it becomes very, very hard to change them and it becomes very, very hard to add new features without like breaking stuff or fighting bugs all the time. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.